This week in Starbase, Booster 10 and Ship 28 were prepared to return here to the launch site, while SpaceX simultaneously worked furiously to get the launch site ready for Flight 3. Plus, there's some neat upgrades that are happening over at the Massey's Outpost. There's been a bunch of progress on the Star Factory, and even some Tower 2 action over at the Sanchez lot. I'm Jack Byer for NSF, and this is your Starbase Update. Let's start the week off at Massey's Outpost, where SpaceX has been working tirelessly on what we believe is a brand new flame trench with a stand for static firing ships. As you can see here, SpaceX has already installed a pair of cryogenic pumps and are about to hook them up to the subcoolers and the tanks right next to them. This section should be for the methane required to static fire a vehicle. There have also been additional footings installed near the liquid nitrogen tanks and the two other subcoolers, which will most likely be used to house a few liquid oxygen tanks for the new stand. Near this location, you can see piping has been laid in a new trench for the lock side and several vaporizers for the new tank farm some of which have since been installed. Now let's move down Highway 4 a bit and take a look at what's happening here. SpaceX has started construction on Rio West, which is a $15 million development to build a grocery store and restaurant, sort of in between Massey's and the production site. Currently, Rio West is slated to be completed by the end of 2024. While it's unclear if the stores and restaurant will be open to the public, they'll certainly save SpaceX employees from having to spend their precious time driving all the way back into Brownsville for food and whatnot, as it's a 40 minute drive with no traffic at all at the Border Patrol checkpoint, and a much, much longer one around shift changes when traffic piles up there. Moving on to the Sanchez lot, next door to the production site, we can see that SpaceX has constructed parking locations for all of the incoming tower pieces, as well as locations to build the last two segments. We should also see the already completed chopstick arms, carriage, and ship quick disconnect arm stored here as well, once they arrive from the Cape, of course. Looking next to the new tower construction area, SpaceX is finishing up the second new booster transport stand. There are also parts for a third one to be built, but SpaceX hasn't started working on it yet. SpaceX is also building a second ship work stand and has the parts at Sanchez for a third. These stands go inside the new bay and will be used for installing engines on ships and boosters, as well as just work in general. SpaceX even appeared to start construction of a tower segment, but laid the piece back down. Possibly they were just doing fit checks or just moving the piece around. Still though, it's really cool to see the beginnings of Tower 2 at Starbase, and there's even more on that in just a minute. Next up, Ship 26 is still on the engine installation stand next to the rocket garden, getting even more stringers installed on it. It's a mystery what SpaceX is doing with this vehicle, and we'll just have to stay tuned to find out what's going on here. Next to Ship 26 is the rocket garden with Ship 20, Ship 32, Booster 4, as well as Booster 12, though after this was shot, Booster 12 was moved back to the Mega Bay. Also parked in the Rocket Garden is the new Booster Transport Stand and the Thrust Puck Sim, which was moved back here after dropping Booster 12 off. In and around the scrapyard nearby is Ship 33's aft section, the three pieces of the Hot Stage Ring testing article, a couple of old Booster Transport Stands, and many ring stands. SpaceX might be getting rid of all the ring stands since they probably built new ones for the Star Factory. The old booster stands are obsolete with the introduction of the new automated stands and the introduction of actual work stands. Now let's move across Remedios Avenue over to the high bay where earlier in the week, Ship 28, Ship 30, and Ship 31 were still inside. Alex was indeed right in last week's Starbase update script. The lifting points on Ship 28's nose cone have been removed, and so the vehicle is one step closer to being ready for flight. There have been some ship shuffles this week, and SpaceX took Ship 28 off of the work stand and did a little repositioning with it, but we couldn't see any of that thanks to fog. SpaceX has completed the tiling on Ship 28, but as of this recording, it has not gotten its livery, and they've taken off all but one of the Starlink antennas on the nose cone. On the night of the 26th, SpaceX rolled out Ship 28 from the high bay and parked it in the ring yard. The two-point lifter is positioned near the engine installation stand and next to Ship 26. SpaceX might want to put Ship 28 back on that stand to do final checkouts and work before rollout, or maybe 28 will go straight to the launch site. If I look tired in this video, it's because I was out at the production site until like 4 a.m. waiting for Ship 28 to move, but it didn't. Someone just messaged me that the SPMTs have been lifted up, so by the time you watch this, who knows where Ship 28 will be? 
Thanks, SpaceX. Ship 30, having completed its cryotesting, should be getting some work done to it in preparation for a static fire test campaign. Things like having the new vent holes cut in its aft skirt, and new Starlink antennas installed. Meanwhile, Ship 31 seems to sort of be on the back burner since its flight is so far into the future. Over inside the Mega Bay, SpaceX has three full boosters on the work stands, with Booster 10 being on the back left one. Booster 12, as I said a moment ago, was moved here from the Rocket Garden and placed on the center stand, and Booster 11 is on the back right stand. With three full boosters inside of it, and one partially constructed one, the Mega Bay is absolutely packed right now. Speaking of that partial booster, Booster 13's methane tank is now complete. So the vehicle is now in two halves, as the LOX tank has been complete for some time. Next up for this vehicle is the final stack, then presumably it'll take the short stroll over to Massey's for proof testing. Next up, Booster 10 has had its hot stage ring reinstalled, and SpaceX appears to be preparing the booster transport stand for a rollout. Maybe even by the time you watch this. Where's Booster 10 gonna go? Who knows? My guess is the launch site, but again, there's so much work still going on here that may be a bit premature. Booster 12 was just recently put onto the center stand in the Mega Bay and should be getting its engines and shielding over the next several months. And last but not least, Booster 11, which has been on the work stand since November 19th, should have all of its engines and shielding by now and could be ready for static fire testing soon after Flight 3. On a little bit of a sad note for us tank watchers, the Mega Bay's door has begun to be installed, which means that the stack of Booster 13 might be the last booster stacking that we get to see. SpaceX is installing these doors for several reasons. One of the big ones is sunlight. When sun shines into the bays and hits the vehicles, they heat up on that side, which expands the metal while the other side stays cool. And this can mess up welds and tolerances required for reliable rocketry. Another huge reason is FOD, or foreign object debris. This is when sand or dirt gets into valves and plumbing, which can lead to damage and failures. Of course, they also want to seal the bays from the salt-laden air of the Gulf of Mexico. Salt air is very corrosive to all metals, even stainless steel. Just look at Booster 4 in the Rocket Garden. Sadly, the days of building rockets out in the open on a sandbar in the middle of nowhere Texas are finally coming to an end. It was a wild ride while it lasted, but the maturing of the production site into a bona fide rocket factory was inevitable, and in many ways is a nice thing to see, as it means more and better vehicles will result from this change. Plus, we still have plenty of epic views thanks to the public nature of Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach. Inside Mega Bay 2, the only operational work stand is currently occupied by Ship 29. Ship 29 is being prepared for static fire testing, which, as with Booster 11, it should be ready for soon after Flight 3. As mentioned earlier, two more stands will be installed in this bay, along with two turntables to help build ships. So just to recap all of this craziness, the Flight 3 vehicles, which are Ship 28 and Booster 10, are being prepared to roll back here to the launch site, ahead of Flight 3, which we currently think could happen as soon as mid-February. The vehicles for Flight 4, which are Booster 11 and Ship 29, are currently both on the work stands after completing proof testing last year, and are getting outfitted for static fires and launch. The vehicles currently slated for Flight 5, Booster 12, and Ship 30 completed their respective proof tests earlier this year, and are currently getting outfitted for static fire testing, and could very well static fire before Flight 4 even flies. Given all of these vehicles, and if everything goes well with Flight 3, we could have several Starship flights in the next few months, which is just a crazy cadence for a new vehicle. Then there's Flight 6, which, if all of the other numbers line up as we suspect, is slated to be flown by Booster 13 and Ship 31. Now, as I said earlier, Booster 13 isn't even fully stacked yet, but it's close, and Ship 31 is getting tiling work done alongside with preparations for proof testing. After that, the only other vehicle built is Ship 32, which is currently just sitting in the rocket garden, while its booster is in pieces inside the Star Factory. After those, it's looking like it'll be Ship 36 or Ship 37, which we think could be the first two version 2 ships, but we'll have to wait and see when those might be constructed. Now let's leave the bays behind and move across the production site, where we immediately come across a completely empty ring yard. There are a couple things from the ring yard that were moved to just behind the high bay, and the rest was moved over near the new scrapyard area. The items that were moved behind the high bay are a booster forward section, a booster common dome section, and a nose cone. The ring yard area was cleaned up while the final section of the Star Factory building is constructed. Speaking of Star Factory, the new section is getting its roof added, while yet another new extension to the building is moving ever closer to Highway 4. Hopefully, maybe, this will have glass on it, but I'm not holding my breath. Maybe, though, we'll see the tooling for this section show up before it's fully enclosed, 
and we can get some hints on exactly what will be done in this area of the building. SpaceX wasted no time in tearing up the concrete from the base of what was Tent 3, and immediately got to work on digging footings for the final section of the Star Factory. This section will most likely be the same height as the first few sections of the Star Factory. Now let's move here to the launch site and start over at the orbital launch pad where for the past several weeks, SpaceX has been doing tons of small upgrades and repair work on the launch pad. The last repurposed methane tank, which is now a water tank for the Orbital Tank Farm's heat exchangers, had its shell reinforced with vertical I-beams and cross-beam supports. Before installing all of this, SpaceX tried many different ways to pull out the dents that were already in the shell due to static fires and flights. There were some large vaporizers that showed up at the launch site, but left and went to Sanchez for now. It's unclear if these are required for the next flight, but with the expectation of both vehicles going to the pad this week, it seems like one water tank might be just enough for the orbital tank farm's heat exchangers. SpaceX is still in the process of hooking up the new horizontal tanks, of which there is only one left to arrive. This appears to be a long-term project, which might be complete by Flight 4, but SpaceX doesn't really need these tanks right now since the vertical LOX and nitrogen tanks have done their work just fine. On the liquid oxygen side of the tank farm, SpaceX has begun installing manifolds that hook up to the back vents of the LOX subcoolers. It looks like they have plans to pipe it over to the new wall that they're installing. Speaking of said wall, this is being installed in order to protect all of the new subcoolers, valves, and manifolds. Moving over to the orbital launch mount and the tower, scaffolding has started to be removed from the inner ring on the mount, and SpaceX has started to paint the legs. This is a great indication of a coming rollout and stack for Flight 3. A lot of the work SpaceX is doing on the orbital launch mount is repair after the last two flights. There's still a load of work to be done here in order to get this pad turnaround even faster. Part of the fixes to the orbital launch mount are the replacement of the burn plates that are on the inside of the ring and on the top. These are basically a blade of armor plates for the orbital launch mount to protect it from the 33 Raptor engines during liftoff. Next up, more steel plates were added to the base of the launch tower as SpaceX tries to protect the concrete there from eroding. These will act as large ablative armor panels for the tower, just like the burn plate on the orbital launch mount. And we can see in the flyover footage the aftermath of the concrete form failure over by the deluge farm with SpaceX having to destroy the concrete walls and start from scratch. Next up, the LR-11000 crane is still down and has been dismantled a decent amount, but not all the way. This is probably just some heavy maintenance that has been put off for some time, since this crane has been in the same configuration for over two years. It's kind of like an airplane heavy sea check where anything not riveted to the aircraft comes off for inspection and repairs. I have no idea what a heavy sea check is, but Ryan put it in the script, so here I am saying it. It makes sense though. At the suborbital side, SpaceX has replaced the concrete under suborbital pad B. This is a decent indication that they still plan on using this pad for a while longer, as Massey's is not even close to being operational yet. Now let's move all the way over to the port of Brownsville, where the seventh segment for Launch Tower 3, which will be the second Launch Tower here in Boca Chica, is still sitting parked. SpaceX may be waiting to move it until more sections have arrived, since they probably have to close Highway 4 from the port connector road all the way to the Sanchez lot in order to transport these sections. Along with the tower sections, it's expected that SpaceX will move the already completed catch arms, carriage, and ship QD currently sitting at Roberts Road to Starbase for Tower 2. It's been an action-packed week, and we can't wait to see Booster 10 and Ship 28 roll out and launch. Let us know in the comments when you think Flight 3 will happen. And as always, you can stay updated by watching Starbase Live. Also, Thank you so much to all of our members and everyone that supports what we do, because these flyovers are not cheap, and we honestly couldn't do it without you. Thank you for watching, and as always, don't forget, be excellent to each other.